I remember one patient that's impacted me the most uh, with respect to this type of therapy and how it really started to change the way that I think about treating patients with metastatic colorectal carcinoma to the liver. She was a 33-year-old woman presenting with bowel obstruction on vacation with her one-month-old baby. And on diagnosis, she had stage four metastatic colorectal carcinoma uh, with a primary intact and a bowel obstruction. And with that, uh, she came from a very um, unique perspective. And that perspective was wanting to do anything and everything to be able to spend as much time with her family as possible. She had excellent performance status. All of her parameters were fine. She had her primary, uh, her primary lesion resected. Uh, her metastatic disease was treated with two months worth of chemotherapy. It was actually full fox and cetuximab, and she encountered some toxicities. Uh, her KRAS status was mutational, so that really limited her therapeutic, her downstream therapeutic choices. And she came uh, as a presentation in our multidisciplinary tumor board for a therapeutic option. And as you can imagine, uh, all of us were very, uh, were very um, sympathetic to her situation and wanted to do everything that we, we could. Uh, we all presented our best data forward, wanting to move forward with some type of therapy. And the natural conclusion, even though this patient was not on Surflox protocol, was to treat her with first-line yttrium-90 resin microsphere therapy. And what that did was that set a number of things into play. We estimated, based on her presentation of disease and her non-response slash uh, intolerance of chemotherapy with her, uh, with her uh, KRAS mutant status, that her survival was probably in the order of a year or less. But when we set the wheels in motion to treat the liver, that really bought her a lot of time. After her CERT procedure, the liver was not a consideration anymore. Every subsequent follow-up image had demonstrated and studies had demonstrated that the liver was quiescent. There was no disease present. Unfortunately, as we know, the systemic components of her disease took over. She developed an ovarian drop metastases, otherwise known as a Krukenberg tumor, and that was surgically resected uh, to, uh, to excellent result. She had some pulmonary lesions that had developed. We were able to effectively treat those with a combination of ablation and surgical resection. And she actually developed brain metastases, and you know, very rare uh, presentation of colorectal carcinoma, of which was then surgically resected. And unfortunately, ultimately, had developed systemic disease uh, that uh, she had finally succumbed to. But I think the light at the end of the tunnel is that she survived 54 months. And that 54 months meant a lot to her. It meant that she had time to be with her baby. It meant that she had time to be with her family. And it gave her a sense of closure so that every day was a gift and every day was one that she could enjoy. And I think when I engage with patients who receive yttrium-90 resin microspheres, I share that hope because I've seen that. I've seen that not only in this patient, but other patients. Because now we, we have a therapy at the end of the road. Now we have a therapy through the evidence of surflox that we can actually start patients on and start their journey in the right way so that the focus can really be directed more towards the extra hepatic burden and really the liver becomes less of an issue. And not only does that translate to an improvement in quality of life, um, but certainly I hope that it will, with the subsequent reporting of Foxfire and the overall survival data, translate into an overall improvement in survival.